All right, welcome back to the IOR Merch Show, where we talk about things like this, because I dig that. Or a nice canvas print of an IOR magazine cover. Or various things. I actually don't have any merch with me right now, so this is all I got. But uh, joining us today is Alex G. To talk about WrestleMania 30, 39? 29. 29. Oh, my God. Feels like it was yesterday. All right. So uh, you're going to see some pictures here of Alex uh, assaulting various members of the wrestling community. So uh, why don't we start with this? How did you go from, like, nothing planned that weekend to, like, you're going to do all the stuff? Tell us, tell us how it kind of went there and uh, went from zero well, to Larry Zbysko. So I think the big thing is having an opportunity to go to WrestleMania, period. So, again, WrestleMania being in the New York, New Jersey area. Uh, technically, that's so, it's so close to New York City, it's ridiculous. So it should be just New York City anyway. Um, however, I had went to WrestleMania 20. Um, a couple of years before this. And I never thought I was able ever, like when you're a kid, I'm watching WrestleMania four, WrestleMania three. I'm like, I'll never go to one of those because it's expensive and it's going to be far right. away. My buddy, 29, it's going to be at MetLife. Um, we never thought we would ever get a stadium WrestleMania here up in New York because it's so freaking cold and, april and you're coming right off the water too so it's 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 met life but it's the goddamn meadowlands and you know what the wind in the meadowlands is ridiculous anyone that watches football knows that that it's insane there uh and it's freezing and it is cold like they have to have heaters and, and stuff like it's ridiculous um i would probably never do another one but never say never because i've been to two of them so far at metlife so uh but it's rough it's cold like you don't don't drink beer you're, you're drinking hot cocoa you're 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 suited up jackets and i brought a blankets and it's and it, it's insane so you know my buddy had uh he had early access because he had an amex card so we're able to get a pre pre-order and anyone that's ever ordered wrestling tickets for a big event know how uh insane that is uh, to actually order the tickets you're sitting there and you're on the ticket master site and you're kind of hoping it doesn't crash on you and you're hoping like you can get the tickets because you know you got, you're battling the scalpers and then and there's fans literally and, and these are the wrestlemanias nowadays that it's everyone coming from all over the world. It is the pro wrestling Woodstock, I guess you would call it. It's it's completely insane. So not only are you not just in competition, people locally like you would be for a Raw or even like a Backlash, for example. All right. All right. So important question. Larry brought this up the other day when he went to WrestleMania this year, and he mentioned there was a number of people in like cosplay, like high tech cos, like really legit looking gear. Did that happen as well for your area or no? Uh, no, I think this was kind of the start of that, though. Um, even the WrestleCon was low budge compared to the last one I went to. Like, everything was kind of, we're kind of figuring this thing out. And there were some people cosplaying. Uh, the Bret Hart guy comes to mind uh, specifically. Um, and the people from Japan who tend to cosplay a lot. You'll see their pictures. We saw those guys. You see them on Twitter and you'll see them on the internet. Look for uh, Japanese uh, wrestling cosplayers. You'll see those every once in a while. But not as much. It wasn't as big um, as the the ones now. Again, this is kind of the start of the this. You know, we they did a couple of stadium shows already, and this is kind of the start of the WrestleMania weekend and everyone being kind of involved and other promotions coming out and and the, the WrestleCon itself. This is one of the early WrestleCons as well. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 pretty nuts, but you did see, you know, we met people from all, as far as Australia, Japan, India, like Africa, like every country in the world you can think of. You know, right. you would meet them. You'll see them in the events. You would see them in the hotels. Uh, you see them when you go out because again, everyone around you is a wrestling fan in this area. So yeah. you go to you go to McDonald's. There's a bunch of wrestling fans there. You go to out to eat or a, a diner. There's all wrestling. It's so those wrestling fans everywhere. Um. And there's a lot of BO across the board here, guys. So just keep that in mind. So a lot of BO, a lot of body odor, a lot of a lot of butt cracks. They, they don't have signs up like at, at uh, near nerd conventions for D and D. They have signs at. No, least. we're not. We're not. It wasn't there yet. So this is this okay. is pretty early on. So we talk about you know ten years ago at this point. So, <laughs> uh, but it was you know it was it was awesome. It was for me. It was the whole weekend. So it starts. It started with Ring of Honor. Uh, in Manhattan at the uh, at the Hammerstein on on Friday for Super Card of Honor, uh, which is the show that uh, Jay Briscoe defeated uh, Kevin Owens for the Ring of Honor World Title. Well, that was the uh, show. That was the show. Wow. And 
we knew it was happening because uh, we looked at the uh, we looked at the ramp and his family started coming out. So the the, the mom and the dad and the, and the wife and the kids, we saw them kind of con- like, and I'm like, oh shit, fucking Jay's winning the title. Jay's winning the title because we <laughs> we front row on that one too. So nice. That was during my streak of I forget the number 15, 17, 19 uh, Ring of Honor shows in a row at the Hammerstein because uh, I was I, I was a fairly regular. Uh, attendee of Ring of Honor at the time because it was to me it was the best promotion going right there. This is pre NXT. NXT was around, but it wasn't what it became right uh, later. Kevin Owens is still Ring of Honor for Christ's sakes. There, um, so we started out with Supercard of Honor, and you know just to quickly you know just if people want to hear what the show was, it was uh, the matches include uh, ACH and uh, Tadarius Thomas. They defeated QT Marshalls and R.D. Evans. Uh, Mike Bennett with Maria Kanellis and Bob Evans to, uh, defeated Shelton Benjamin. Uh, Michael Elgin defeated Jay Lethal. Uh, Cliff Compton, Jimmy Jacobs, Jimmy Rave, Brett Titus, and Rhino uh, with Steve Carino defeated uh, BJ Whitmer, Caprice Coleman, Cedric Alexander, Mark Briscoe, and Mike Mondo, who I went to high school with, by the way. Uh, Carl Anderson defeated uh, Roderick Storm, um, Roger Strong, uh, Matt Taven uh, with uh, Scarlett and Truth Martini uh, defeated uh, Adam Cole and Matt Hardy. Uh, Bobby Fisher, Kyle O'Reilly uh, defeated David Richards and Eddie Edwards, and Jay Briscoe defeated uh, Kevin Steen. So that was my that was my Friday show. So we okay. went down, um, and I slept over my my, my friend lives pretty close to Queens. Uh, so, oh, you know, getting out of Manhattan um, and then sleeping at his house and then driving to Jersey in the morning is what we did uh, that day. So that would that day was completely insane, and I got some autographs with uh, with the Briscoes and, uh, and a couple other people too, and. That's when I insulted uh, uh, Eddie Edwards, which starts my uh, forever feud with Eddie Edwards because he went to go slap my hand, and I'm like, kind of like, no, get out of the way. I want to want to slap hands with Davy Richards. Oof. He, 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 the, the stare, the stare that he gave me, the look that he gave me was it's in my soul forever. I'll never forget it. So he was very nice. upset with me. And uh, moving on to uh, you know WrestleCon itself again. It's an early wrestling conventions now. I've done plenty of wrestling conventions, and one day we'll do a show on wrestling conventions and mm-hmm. <laughs> and the shenanigans and title foolery that goes on there. Um, but this is the infamous uh, convention where Marty Jannetty was kicked out for stealing. Uh, stuff stealing? The table. Yeah, so so mm-hmm. allegedly, okay. allegedly, uh, um, he was stealing off of the gimmick tables. So, like, they would shut down the event, and then, like, the the facility is like okay this is the wrestle convention on this side and then over there is where they're having the matches for the shows and we'll go through the shows a little bit so while everyone's watching the show like good old marty allegedly is going through <laughs> going through the back area stealing shit and he was he was uh thrown out wow uh, also also the wwe representatives along with the i guess the local sheriffs of Tatakis, new jersey came down and raided wrestlecon Looking for bootleg and unauthorized merchandise, so that was fun. What? Yeah, because we're all just chilling there, right? So you walk around, and it's not a big fucking place. So you're sitting there, and like p- people come, and people go. So like, oh, Kevin Nash is there, and then Kevin Nash is there for two hours, and like, oh, it's the Ultimate Warrior, and then, you know, what I mean? so you just kind of just hanging around, right? You know, doing stuff. So you know, we get to you know, you get to see shit. You know, so like, yeah, so they came, and then the cops came, and a couple, you know, they were. A couple of people. They don't think they were arrested, but a lot of this shit was, you know, WWE took it. Wow. So that was cool. Uh, we also saw, we saw Bret Hart and Rob Van Dam, and then we realized how short they are because they're very small. I am technically I am taller than Rob Van Dam and both Bret Hart, by the way. Combined. Uh, maybe. <laughs> ultimate the Ultimate Warrior uh, had a private area where you couldn't go see him, so he was all curtained off. So if you did, like, you couldn't even look at him. You know what I mean? Like the rest of the guys are just oh. at the tables and shit. But he was a curtain off era. Hogan was there. Uh, so this is the infamous. Uh, so you know, my my buddy felt the need to drink the entire time we were there. Okay. So he's just drinking heavily. This day, this is like one o'clock in the afternoon. So he's like just day drinking. Uh, I'm not partaking. I'm taking. I'm drinking the diet cokes and stuff. Um, so like it's like oh man I really gotta piss dude I'm like all right man go to the bathroom right so big bouncer dude right in front of the bathroom and he wouldn't let my buddy in because Hulk Hogan's in the bathroom taking a shit <laughs> so like he's trying to bang the guy like please all let me go in and then from the stall my buddy hears 
It's all good, brother. Let him in. <laughs> so my friend goes takes a piss while Hulk Hogan's taking her shit. And my buddy says that was the smelliest shit he's ever smelled in his entire life. Like, Did, he, was, did he go to the bowl afterwards and scoop out some poop and be like... I was, I, I was asking, but no, Hogan was in there like for another 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> Like, hey, pasta mania know, is the price. Pasta mania, though. He must be on that protein. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so that's ridiculous. And then, you know, there are shows at the event, and I'm just going to go through them like real quick, just to, this, you know, just to level of talent at, at these shows at the time. And some people, you're like, oh, who's that? It's like, oh, remember them? And a lot of people, are like, oh, these guys are big stars now. So, like, um, at the Dragon Gate USA show that we went on that day, we saw Rich Swan uh, who defeated Brian Kendrick, uh, Chuck Taylor and Inf- uh, In- Invitational, which was I guess was a I don't know what you would call it, uh, one of those uh, scramble matches I believe it was. Uh, he had uh, Tony Nese who defeated Chuck Taylor, Shane Strickland, Fire Ant, Jigsaw, Eric Cannon. Uh, we had Scott Reed who uh, with Larry Dallas defeated uh, Derek Rise, uh, Trent. Uh, <laughs> Defeated John Davis. Um, we got Ricochet, who defeated uh, Akira Towaza. Uh, Ugnation defeated Sammy Callahan. Um, Young Bucks uh, defeated Sima uh, and AR Fox. And Gargano defeated Shingo uh, at that show. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, that was just one of the shows. And then Takara show was, was ridiculous, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like... I, People people give Chuck Taylor a lot of shit, but he's like the world's best heel, and they don't use him that way. Why won't um, they? I don't know. I don't know. Like we watch like this: Chuck Taylor, Icarus, Johnny Gargano, and Sugar Duncanton uh, taking on Scott Parker and uh, Shane Matthews, uh, Grand Akuma, and Mario Gennetti. This is before Mario Gennetti was uh, escorted out of the building, helping himself. Yeah. But like Chuck Taylor does this like five minute hide the hammer spot. So he took like the ring. Like, do you know the hammer they ring the bell with? Sure. Like he takes it and like he's hiding it from like the referee, and then you know he's just like hitting people with it, like like <laughs> where the referee doesn't see it, and like everyone's like, Woo! like so everyone's kind of another joke. Um, we did see kind of like the um, remember Jerry Lawler the the hidden roll of nickels spot? Yeah, just like that. Like he's like he's hitting the guy, and the referee's checking him for it, and he's like putting it in his trunks, he's putting it in his in his boot, he's giving it to somebody else, and he gives it back and whacks someone else with it. Like it was really, it was really good. It was really good. Uh, we saw an appearance by Fire Ant, which is uh, which is Oren Cassidy, by the way. Now, mm. so he was he was there. Eddie Kingston defeated Hollow Wicked, uh, and then a special appearance by Jushin Thunder Liger, uh, with Mike Crackenbush defeating Jigsaw. And was that the infamous uh, thumb on the butt spot? Uh, uh, not at that show. They did it, but it wasn't. <laughs> they did it where it was like like eight of them, right? And they all had their fingers up the butt, yeah. Yeah, uh, that cool. wasn't the that wasn't the one that everyone seen, but they did they did that spot again, yeah. <laughs> and then we went to the Shimmer Show, which is again right after it. Um, mm-hmm. Noticeable people that people were not Mercedes Martinez was there. Um, Soraya Knight was in the main event. This is pre Page. Um, oh, okay. Page, yeah. Um, Chile and Melissa beat her uh, for the uh, for the title. Uh, so that's like my first like all women show too. Uh, that, that that was cool, uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a steel cage match too, which was I thought was crazy. A cage so, match at a women's show. Yeah, it was the main event. So it was Chiller Melissa defeated Paige. I guess you would call her or Sarah, if you want to yeah. call her. Um, so that was cool. And then we watched uh, Five Dollar Wrestling, which for those of you who have never seen Five Dollar Wrestling, uh, watch it. Go to highspots.com and watch it. It's hilarious. Five Dollar Wrestling. Yeah. It's basically like Coke Cabana and uh, you know Marty DeRosa making fun of like really it's like ridiculousness, but for pro wrestling, I guess is what you call it. Do you remember uh, a thing called Kaiju Big Battle? Yes. Whatever. Like I always think that when I hear things like ridiculousness or like Jakar, I think of Kaiju Big Battle because they were promoting the hell out of it here in Boston one year and yes. they ended up canceling the show. And I was gonna go. Yeah. And I like it was a big deal for a while. It's basically like uh it's basically like guys dressed up in like costumes, you know, which was a thing for a while. Like they were like, oh, what's the like mascot type costumes? 
So it was never a um, offshoot of Jakar. It was no, it was. Oh, like, okay. they were involved because Jakar would have that uh, <laughs> quite a bit. So. All right. So so you went to the three shows in a row or Four. the same? Like, okay. Yeah, just back to back to back to back to back. That's where we met Brian Kendrick and the, we're like when we twine, we'll go into the, the WrestleCon earlier that day, but. Uh, after all these shows, we we meet up with uh, good old Brian Kendrick in the in the elevator, and he was uh, he was on a different planet. Oh, yeah. So, so he was a little. He little, likes uh, he likes to partake on the little you know little reefer here, you know. Okay. So yeah, that's good. It was good. <laughs> um, but he's in the same hotel as us, and we're going up the elevator together. So uh, he's again another one that's uh, way smaller than he looks small on TV, but he's way smaller in person. Yeah. I Ricky Steamboat was that way. When I saw Ricky Steamboat, I was like, "Do you know who's bigger than you think?" Fucking Jim Cornette is fucking huge. Oh yeah, he's he was he's tall, right? Fucking big, fucking dude. Like he's like six four. Really? Yeah. He did a great job of of selling as the right. smarmy guy. Like he's way bigger than you think. He was a big influence oh. when I was coming up. Yeah. Um. So the WrestleCon itself, like, was really cool. Again, you know, I met up with uh, with Raven. He stole our Sharpie, though. <laughs> Fucking dick. It's Raven being Raven, right? So he's trying to do, like, his autograph, but his Sharpie doesn't work. So he chucks it. And he just throws it, like, behind him. Grabs another Sharpie. doesn't work. Doesn't, Sharpie doesn't work. He's like, oh, can I have that? Fucking takes our Sharpie. Writes the autograph. He's like, here you go. 20 bucks, please. He doesn't give it back our Sharpie. I'm like, this motherfucker. So, so in these pictures, like, like you know, um, here's Raven right there. Um, yeah. <laughs> the question I have is, is it purely like, and I'm thinking now with camera phones being a big thing, that if you try to sneak a photo, they'll like whoop your ass? Oh, which happened to my wife uh, once. Oh, um, your wife so, snuck a photo? Yeah, so the... Um, this fast forward a couple of years later, we go to a wrestling convention. My wife's there with me, and she, she likes to take the pictures. And you know, she's just she's just basically just snapping around at the, not taking a picture of anyone in particular, but she's just snapping like just the ambiance, I guess you would call it, or just, sure. just like just taking shots of the pictures. And the fucking the guy who was the handler for Ron Simmons got fucking pissed, yelled at my wife, and I didn't take that shit. And Ron was like, "Hold, hold on, like they're cool, no worries." And uh, I get an autograph and a picture for Ron, and he didn't charge me. He was like, I'm sorry about that. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to charge you. It's all good. Damn. And this is Ron fucking Simmons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's fucking dope. He's fucking he's the coolest. First black ever. world champion. Yeah. Um. So, we, like, we met, like, Iron Sheik was there. That was cool. I right. don't know why he has the big gold belt. I don't know who the guy was with him. That looks like. Yeah, I was going to ask him, that guy, like. No, he was just there with the sheik, like he was his handler, because these people have people to handle the Help shit. Them. Yeah, so I took the picture with with, uh, with the sheik, and you know, sheik is awesome. So when you um, go up, right? Uh, I've never yeah. been to one of these situations. Uh, when you go up, is it more a thing where you're like, there's like the sheik has like four different pictures or whatever. Do you just yeah. pay a flat fee and you pick a picture, or is it like 10, 20, 50, whatever? It depends, like uh, on the person. Uh, so every 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 table is different prices on different stuff. So uh, usually you get a you get a quote unquote a combo, which is a picture and 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 an autograph picture, uh, which would be like say it's like thirty bucks, but a picture by itself would be twenty. You know what I mean? So if you get both, it's cheaper technically. Right. Um, some people like all right. So if you want Raven to sign as Johnny Polo or <laughs> Scotty Flamingo. He yes. will charge him an extra ten dollars because it's Raven. Okay, and he does shit like that. Um, but other than that, everyone's basically you know there's a, usually a group of four pictures, and you bring your own shit. Um, and the pictures and the, they're usually the same price. Um, met up with Kevin Nash there. He invited me back to the strip club later on that evening. Yeah. Unfortunately, I told him. Uh, <laughs> I have to go to the Shiver Show. He's like, you're a fucking Mark. <laughs> <laughs> In hindsight, I probably should have went to the strip club with Kevin Nash. Right. Um, I think I don't think it was him inviting me to the strip club to hang out because I'm so cool. I think he was probably hosting a party there. 
ah i bet that's what it was like yeah. you know you know 20 bucks at the door or 30 right. 40 is, you know he's like it's like i'm like no kevin nash i have to go to the shimmer show he's like you're a fucking mark <laughs> nice who who of these people in the pictures here like who was the nicest who was the weirdest who was like just a dick um the best part is two of the two of the best people um well three of the best people there's three um not pictured uh x pac okay nicest dude in the world to the point where he got in an argument with the wwe officials um because like th- they were really strict on their time so like if xbox there for two hours it's two hours don't give a fuck who's online or if you still have a line you're done okay and they escort the people away X Pac told these motherfuckers, shut the fuck up, you cocksuckers. I'm signing every one of these goddamn autographs. Because it's free. When you go to the WWE, this is the when you go to Access, all the autographs are free because you pay like 200 bucks just to get it. Oof. So it wasn't like X Pac was getting any more money because he was signing more autographs, because these were all free technically. Okay. But this motherfucker and this is the this is the year that he he ripped up his asshole. Remember that? Oh. When he ripped his asshole. Yeah, I remember that. So this is that year. So the dude's in so much fucking pain. And like there's people coming up with make a wishes and stuff. Like he's getting out of line. He's talking to the guys that you know have special needs and stuff. He sat there and took a picture with every single person in that fucking line. That's cool. Okay, so he was the one. nicest dude. Nicest dude. Zabisco will talk your ear off. Like you sit there, you get an autograph from Larry Zabisco, you're there for 25 minutes. <laughs> and he will just talk to you. Okay. Like, like just on anything, like and, and the weather, you know. We we're talking about how how awesome we thought his announcers. Like, oh, no one really really gives a shit about my announcing career. I'm glad someone actually liked the shit I did for fucking ten years. Um, number three, and most importantly, motherfucking Terry Funk. Oh, yes, Terry Funk is awesome. Um, because he's the type of person who's like, you know, Alex. This is the exact conversation. You know, Alex, did you, did you see that Bob Backlund last night? What an idiot. That Bob <laughs> Backlund is crazy. And he went on like a 15 minute dive about how he thought fucking Bob Backlund was fucking nuts. Well, he's not wrong. Like, I don't you know, like, I don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> he's just gonna burst a vendetta. He's like, Alex, I don't he's like he's actually he's, but he talks to you like he's like your best friend. Because he was like, Alex, can you believe fucking job Bob Backlund? Alex, he's a fucking nut job. What, what's wrong with him? <laughs> so you know, what, I mean, I'll never forget that. In the picture, in this picture, this looks like a big multi mural. Is that like something he was selling, or he had a book he had him sign? So um, I didn't know this at the time. So at Access, they don't have anything for you. They have just a generic WrestleMania thing, right? So like for Access, you have to bring your own shit if you want them to sign something specific. Oh, because they don't have pictures of like Terry Funk. So what I did, it was like for for the guys at Access, uh, there's a big fucking WrestleMania book. And I had like with all the people in it, and, like the Hall of Fame and stuff like that. So I bought that book for like fucking 30 bucks and had them sign that on their page. Okay. Um, because I didn't, but you learn, right? This is the first time. So I know like for, if I ever did Access again, I didn't do it the last time I went, but I know I'm, I'm bringing my own shit. Okay. Yeah. So. And Terry was another guy that that didn't stop with the autographs either, because um, there were. It was funny because it's like, <laughs> Mister Funk, Mister Funk, you have to go. Mill Mascaris is coming, and he's like, "Fuck Mill Mascaris." <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 think about this too: is of these guys, who had the longest line? Who had the shortest line? Um, Rikishi's line was ridiculous. Okay, but that was long. Some of the guys, like you'll see, like Daniel Bryan and Cesaro, those were VIP stuff. So you like kind of paid those separately, too. Okay. Um, so those lines were pretty long, too. Like a lot of the, because Access was funny because Access was done uh, in, in the IZOD Center. So the autographs, most of them were in the concourse, like where like concessions are. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into the actual arena, this is where like all your like goofy shit is at. Like, oh, there's a wrestling match going on, and it was basically just NXT guys just running matches. So there's matches going on the entire time. 
Okay. Um, and then like you, you could this is where like they had the, the booth where you could call a match or you can take a picture with a John Cena fucking standee for no reason. Um, because you, you got it's impossible to get a picture with John Cena uh, <laughs> at the time at least. This is like this is peak Cena too. Oh, okay. So his like his his meet and greet like him and Undertaker are like five hundred dollars. Like wow. Yeah. So, um, but I got Daniel Bryan. I got uh um Cesaro. Uh, so those guys were cool. But who? But who was the uh, what's his name? The Virgil. Was there was there someone who people were like? Not on this one because nothing stands out because WrestleCon was so like informal. Like there wasn't even really a lines. Okay. Like, he's kind of just walking up to dudes. But I can tell you who had the who had the fucking shortest line I ever seen, and the longest line I've ever seen at a convention though. Yeah. The longest line I've ever seen at a convention is two of them. And they would be two, on two completely different spectrums. Ric Flair line okay. was ridiculous, and fucking Enzo's line was ridiculous. Enzo, wow, yeah, like, okay. Yeah. And this is this is the year that uh, we did the running in the Ring of Honor show. Oh, the on, 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 okay, yeah. On, on the, like, and his line was insane. Uh, the shortest line I've ever seen for anyone who had like no one was Joey Ryan, which I was surprised. This is pre all allegations and stuff too, but he still had no one coming to his table. Oh, see, I'd feel bad. I'd be like, oh, no. Like most people had decent. Like everyone had. Like there's your premier guys. Like Flair's line is gonna be big. Foley's line is gonna be big. Brett's line is gonna be big. Like hey, listen, you know Shane Douglas's line is not gonna be very long. Uh, Ultimo Dragon's line is not gonna be very long. Uh, so those guys uh, are not going to be. Muda's line was pretty long though, but um, I actually waited on Muda's line twice. <laughs> oh, I can get that. Now, now moving uh, ahead, like so. You, so this was Saturday. You saw all the shows, and then Sunday was the WrestleMania. Sunday was Mania, and like I said, uh, the Meadowlands is cold as shit. And for some reason, we're in this like skybox area. So, um, so there's the luxury boxes behind us. And there's like the seats, but you don't know this when you're buying the seats that they're attached to this this area, the special VIP area that you go in. So like to, for us to get in this VIP, like you have to show your ticket, and you go in there, and it's not like a normal concession. Like there's fucking steaks, they're making steaks, and there's a guy cutting them for you, and there's and there's shrimps and shrimp cocktails. Like we're like, how expensive was that though? We didn't find, we didn't think it was any more expensive than it normally. Like the ticket was like a, I don't know, like three hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like outrageous. It was not paying the like food though. Food was comp, dude. The only thing you pay for was drinks. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting there. I'm I'm eating steak. I'm eating shrimp. Like I'm like I'm, I don't know if I'm really even supposed to be here. Um, they have like <laughs> um, recliners and shit. Like you just watch it like while you're eating. And then they had all your normal food too. They had, they had your your popcorn and your hot dogs and all that shit too. But... Here's an important question for you. Uh, did you tip the staff? No, no, I didn't even know what was going on. I I used to work at uh, Boston College luxury boxes as a bartender, and I got tipped one time, and it was Coach Jim O'Brien, R.I.P. Um, and he gave me fifty bucks. But I all the games I ever worked, they never ever tipped me. With the cheap bastards, rich, rich cheap bastards. Like it was so bizarre. Like I felt like. Like there's dudes in suits in there, and I'm sitting there with like an Adidas top, like and a hat, yeah. and a WrestleMania yeah. blanket. Like, like, like it's. It was. I felt like underdressed while I was in there. It was completely bizarre. Did your um, ROA chat get dirty looks? No, like they don't give a fuck. But it was just weird. <laughs> it was. It was weird. Like, like again, you can see the photos of where I was sitting uh, in terms of WrestleMania. So yeah, you get an idea like well, how far I you know how far away it was from the ring. So um, so the show itself. Yeah, so you have pretty good seats for what I'm looking at here. Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite I mean, match? Uh, I don't know because it was it was it was it was such a like. Can I say this ending on the show? Like, holy shit, got blown away. No, like the Punk Taker match was good. Mm-hmm. Um, Cena Rock was okay. We were upset that fucking Daniel Bryan got beat in 30 seconds. Oh, that was that show. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. So it's like. 
But you don't really remember. There's nothing. There's nothing like go back and look at the card. There's nothing memorable on that show. It wasn't a great WrestleMania card by any. Like it's was not that, one of like. Um, was that Punk Taker one or Punk Taker two? Uh, I think Punk Taker two. I want to say I don't remember. Okay. Uh, I think this was. I think it was Punk's last match. I think oh, he's done then... after this. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I I don't know if he because he does the Rumble right. He does this. Um, but yeah, if you look at the show, it's like it's Triple H beating Brock, uh, Taker and Punk, Del Rio and S- versus Swagger, Fandango and Chris Jericho. I'm talking talk about the Fandango, by the way, because yeah. we were all leaving singing the Fandango song. That's when that got hot for a second. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. hot there, and then at the Raw the next night. <laughs> well, on, uh, traditionally the the raw. Well, maybe maybe maybe, maybe 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 it wasn't wasn't that show that uh because here it says it was Daniel Bryan and Kane versus Biggie Langston and Dolph Ziggler. Maybe I remember that team. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I remember that wrong. Is Biggie done, by the way? Oh, probably. Yeah. Like I just figured it's been like what two years now. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's a shame. I also had the Shield, uh, who beat Big Show and Randy Orton and Sheamus, and then you had the Miz on the on the pre-show defeated Wade Barrett. <laughs> it's funny how you forget like certain parts of like, oh, that happened here. Like, well, that's the whole thing. It's it's like these it kind of runs together. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like you're trying to remember what happened. I'm like, I don't remember. So your picture with Raven, like I'm looking at the pictures here. Like, was were you making a face or was it just in between? I was making a face. I was trying to be like stoic or whatever. You, uh, by the way, the biggest douche, I don't think there's a picture of me and him there, but uh, it was Tommy Dreamer. There was no, no it's not here, but yeah. what really what made him a douche? He was just, he was just douchey. Like, like, I, I, so I walk up to him, I gave him, I gave him the money, like, he completely ignored. He's having like another conversation. Actually, he's having a conversation with Rob Feinstein. So, because Rob was there, so he's having a conversation with Feinstein. Doesn't even look at me. Takes my money, signs the thing, hands it back to me. Takes the picture, and and, and the entire time he's just having this conversation with Rob Feinstein, like completely ignoring that I exist. I'm like, man, fuck you, Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> so, the question here: Who is the guy in the first picture here? That's the guy who runs Kayfabe commentaries. So he, right now he's on. He does the uh, he does the podcast with Kevin Nash right now. Uh, but like all those uh, shoot interviews that, from Kayfabe commentary, he's the guy. And I was really big into them at the time. And he was supposed to do DDP and I think Jake that night. He was telling me like, you know, Jake didn't want to do anything. He was, he was you know, have a, like I was a really big fan of his. So I saw him there. I just kind of stopped him in the thing. I'm like, I'm take a picture with you, bro. Read his book too. His book is fantastic, by the way. What is it? Um, I forget the name of it though, but I have it on audio, and because he he actually narrates it on audio. Okay. Um, but it's really good. So that's uh Sean Oliver, by the way. And uh, the picture with Daniel Bryan, were you like in a blackened room or on the side of a boat? <laughs> so we're like- no, because like I said, the VIP guys are. They're in the arena, but they're up in the seats. So, like, we're in the nosebleed seats. Okay. So they make they 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 they, they made an area there and the and uh, where the seats are. So, like, down in the arena, it's like again, it has all the stuff. It has like matches going on and all the stuff that you can walk around on the floor. In the seats, like in the four corners, it's like you know your your next tier up guys uh, that they want to have meet greets. I think we pay for them separately. Okay. And what was it like uh, getting there to and from? Were you parking? Were you taking the train? So um, this is pre-Uber. Um, I guess Uber <laughs> was around, but as, as a concept. But um, So everything was relatively close. So our hotel was across the street from WrestleCon. So you just walk over. Um, the rest of the stuff, we had to take uh, uh, taxis. So literally just like... You, know, you go downstairs, and like, you know, we need a taxi to the IZOD Center, and someone would drive us to the IZOD Center, and then they get it. You know, we get their card, and so we would call them on a the cell phone, like, I'll come back and pick us up. That's how that went. All right. 
WrestleMania, the one the last WrestleMania I went to, uh it was there was a shuttle, so it was better. <laughs> so I got a shuttle to to from Manhattan to uh to MetLife. We'll talk about that one day. <laughs> Well, we're almost out of time, but I think it was a good. It was funny because Larry just did the one and talked about you know going to LA. That's what inspired me to do this one because I was watching you guys. I was like, I went to WrestleMania too, you know. Uh, <laughs> WrestleMania two. No, I wish. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good poll that we should put up. If you had to pick one WrestleMania to go to, which and you're front row, which one would you go to? Hmm, that's a good good question. Although we'll say uh, we recently have been talking about how like AEW. There's these fans that will sit in the very front row, so they're right there on the screen, and they just they're obnoxious. And I was thinking the way around this is don't sell those seats. Have them like be like charity raffle. Yeah. So you go and you go, okay, there's ten seats here, and you you pick people from the audience, and they get to come up and sit in the front row before the show. I mean, I've done that. Like again, when I went to those Ring of Honor shows and it's the same fans because we're all in the front row, so. The way you get front row tickets at the Ring of Honor show, at least back in the day, is that you bought the tickets during fucking intermission of that show that you're on for the next show. So that's how oh, you okay. got them. So we were front row. Like you'll see pictures. Like you watch Ring of Honor enough, you'll you'll see us. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Especially during you the conference. same thing every time. No, I'm not an asshole. You, um, do you dress up in like gar- garish clothes and have a side? No, you know, just... see what I'm wearing to WrestleMania. That's what I would wear. Yeah, <laughs> Ring of Honor hats. Perhaps some sort of Kevin Steen shirt, of some sort, and and we're off and running there. That's basically it. Nice. Um, but we would be the same. There'd be the same fucking 30, 40 people that you would see, and a lot of them are fucking obnoxious, and a lot of them <laughs> are assholes, and you know, you kind of look at them like you're a dick, and you kind of all know each other because you guys sit not necessarily in the same seats, but. You guys are all front row, so you look across and you look at this guy, that guy. You know, you're the guy in the, the pink polo and the Green Lantern fan who's always there just with his mom and, and yada 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 and, and, and a bunch of other people. You know, you know the guy who bring the streamers, right? That guy <laughs> who would hand out all the streamers and we would throw streamers in the ring. <laughs> so. well, we'll have to talk. We'll have to do a show about the ROH experience. Oh um, man, it's awesome. We are we are about out of time, so we're gonna close it down. But thank you for doing this. Yeah, man. I'm glad you got inspired because uh, now we have yeah. a fifth show. Yeah, I'll probably be on these a bunch. You know. Oh yeah, sure. well, you get lots of uh, lots of uh, wrestlers who you've run afoul of. It's true. Travel but- Guerrero does not wash his hands after leaving the bathroom. Who? Travel Guerrero. Oh, uh, Chavo. he tried to shake my hand. I'm like, you didn't wash your hands, dude. <laughs> I just <laughs> watched you take a piss. All right, well, there it is. End of our show with a shot across the bow. So uh, thank you, Alex, for doing the show. And uh, we'll do another one soon. Yeah, man. All right. Peace. Thanks. I dig that.